It is indeed a pleasure to have this privilege to play here for you. And we, we intend to give you a very fine program. Mic so check, mic check. Back, relax and enjoy the moment. moment, moment, moment. Mic check, one, two, one, two. What up? Ooh. Ooh, I'm over here queuing up the Bluetooth so you know what time that, what time it is. Good morning. De- oh, Denise, you beat Debbie. Good morning, Denise. How you doing? How I sound? Sound good? one thing i sound caffeinated <laughs> as per usual i'm gonna hop over to facebook on my phone just a couple more days till you know what i mean 41 savage just a couple more days what up y'all <laughs> it's good to see y'all let me let me hop over to facebook facebook algorithm don't love me and it's like yeah we heard you talking shit about our founder if you're on facebook this morning we turn it down let me turn it down you're on facebook um good morning say what's up in the chat it's good to see you i'm gonna say good morning in facebook yup 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 all right so yeah couple more days couple more days to uh 41 savage uh this is mic'd up the live stream on twitch i'm your host mika gazden uh shout out to all my twitch peeps watching hey l cool j getting close little mama all right i got i got a pop quiz for those hey shelby Good morning, Shelby, on Facebook. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you for checking in on um, Facebook. If I ignore you, I'm so sorry. Just know that I, I, I'm with you in spirit. I don't get that much engagement on Facebook live during the show, not, at least not right now. So sometimes it's hard for me to look at both chats, uh, both here on Twitch and there. But either way, happy that you're here. Um, my neighbor's up there just getting it in. Good morning, neighbor. <laughs> Um, what's up? I was killing my neighbor this weekend between, um, the Netflix movie, the harder they fall. And I have a, um, I have a sound system like with a crazy subwoofer. Uh, so watching any type of shit, watching any movie sometimes, um, it's just like, boom, boom, boom. I was killing my neighbor this weekend between that movie and, and my uh, R&B-a-thon. I, hey, Jessica, good morning. Oh, I had a pop quiz, but I think. I think you already saw it. I was going to say a pop quiz, little mama, but you kind of already did it. Yes, pop quiz for those who are subbies to the to the newsletter. You saw. Look at y'all. Look at look at y'all helping my open rate. Yes. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, the film was great. The film was great. I'm gonna watch this. We're gonna watch the trailer. Like seriously, the film was great. It's, I think it's like certified fresh too. Rotten Tomatoes. If you're one of those people, I'm not a big on Yelp and, and reviews and stuff like that. And even like, um, you know, sometimes movie reviews are hit or hit or miss. Um, but nah, it, I like it when my, I like it when I like something. And then like the the mainstream r- rate or review site likes the same things. I, it kind of makes me feel smart. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was really good, and uh, it's completely fictional. The storyline is fictional. However, um the black outlaws and cowboys and cow cow women featured within the movie are real. So, um, shout out to those who are into like history that sent, that sent this black people. Cause yeah, we was out West one in was it? One in four cowboys were black, but you ain't going to see that. And I'm a huge, like I'm a huge Western movie. Like seriously, like William Wyler films, like, um, Giant, um, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, Johnny Guitar, um, Red River, like even with problematic John Wayne movies, I, I just love Western, spaghetti Western. I love the genre and the range within the genre. Um, hey, good morning, Leticia. Good morning. Thanks for checking in on Facebook. Good morning. Um, so I love, I love, I love that genre, but it's always missed black people. And when they did fe- feature n- indigenous folks, and black people in those classic westerns, you know, they were always in this subservient role and whatnot. But we'll do that. We'll do a movie live stream. <laughs> I'm a unique creation. I know. I love. I'm, I love westerns. Me and my dad said I don't like gun smoke and stuff, but he kind of pulled me into like Bonanza and gun smoke and all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man. Okay, so let's get to it. So today, shout out to Crystal Matthews. Um, yeah, she's a real one. Uh, just like a, a couple of y'all 
who I might call the last minute, text at the last minute, yo, can you hop on a live stream? Crystal Matthews, who's running for Senate, Democratic candidate for Senate, running against Tim Scott. She's going to be joining us within the 9 o'clock hour. So I'm super excited to have Crystal join us there uh, or join us here. <laughs> um, and we're going to just, y'all, y'all, I totally vegged out this weekend, but, uh, oh, the Dems were busy. The Dems were busy. The Dems had their blue jamboree. Uh, the mayor race in Columbia is uh, getting crazy. Um, we're going to get into all of that. Thank you so much, Nicole, for your compliment. Coming from a real, coming from a real artist <laughs> about my graphics. Um, good morning, D. Bartlett. It's good to see you. Good to see you. All right, so let's switch it up. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. That sound like law and order. I'm so caffeinated. So, uh, hopefully you checked out or you are subscribed to the Mic'd Up podcast. Um, the Mic'd Up podcast is available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. It does feature the old logo. So, if you it, Apple re, uh, redid some things with the podcast. I had to resubmit my podcast, I believe, to get the updated um, podcast art. But, however, however... Um, you can still get it's still there. So the old Charleston Activist Network logo is going to pop up. It's red, white, and blue. Um, uh, but yeah, new episode this morning popped up around six thirty, a little later than usual. Sorry, uh, but it's uh, my top five must read books. Uh, my top five must read books, and so um, I really hope y'all check it out. It's me talking, but then I splice it in with with um, uh, content that features either the artist, the, the excuse me, the author who wrote the book. Um, or, or, you know, or just more information about the book. So just listen to that 26 minutes, under 30 minutes, um, check it out. Um, yeah. So mic'd up the podcast available, Spotify, Apple podcast, Google stitcher, a bunch of places. I right? boom. So yeah, like I said, we're going to have crystal come up here at nine o'clock. I'm super excited. Let me see. I'm super excited. Uh, like I said, the Dems were busy this weekend with the Blue Jamboree. Um, Doug Jones was in the house. Uh, people popping off on IG regarding Tamika Isaac Divine. I had, I, you know, gave my two cents on uh, what's going on with uh, the endorsement situation. But we're going to have Crystal come and talk specifically about uh you know, updates, update us from her campaign trail. Her emails have been consistent. She's been doing her call time. She's been calling me. She hit me up, which is a great thing. Ask for money. Ask for money, candidates. Don't be afraid. Crystal's been doing it. And I want you guys to hear from her. Chris, Crystal's the, like legit one of the most candid people I've ever met. She's like me in that the one thing where I think we are similar because we're very different, but the where we were very similar is that we both want to know and grow. We both, if we don't know something, we'll tell you, I don't know what that is. And she'll ask, like, sometimes I do a live stream. She says, wait, 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 what's, what's going on with this person? I love that. Not enough people do that in real life. Like, if you don't know something or you want f a, more information, she's a constant, like, a... a a constant seeker of information and, and, and knowledge. And I like that. I like a naturally inquisitive person. And I think that's a great trait to have for anybody running for office. So shout out to Crystal. She'll be here at nine within the nine o'clock hour. I'll send her the link. She'll call in. Boom, bow. You got it, right? All right. So let's hop out of that real quick. And let's get to, I'm going to go to, I'm going to start with IG. I'm not even going to start with the newspaper. I'm going to start with IG. What's up, um, Brienne? How you doing? Brienne, I need a nickname for you. Yup. Who's this? Hey, this is the first time chatter. Is it brand? What is it? Brand? Tell me how to pronounce your name. Who that? Who you be? What up, Noah? Noah jokes. Um, but thank you for joining the chat. Hey, welcome. Y'all know how to, y'all got manners. Y'all welcome to newbie. <laughs> y'all got, yeah. Thank you over here on, on, uh, on Twitch. Welcome. Um, so yeah, let's start on Instagram. Ooh. Let's start, um, what's that? Oh, look at that. Look at the algorithm. Hit listening, ear hustling. Ear hustling. I don't know, Tamika, is, is it an endorsement? Let me see if he, re, let's see if he re, yeah. I don't, I, it, now I'm not, I'm not challenging. I'm not contradicting Miss, um, Miss Isaac Devine at all. But, uh, 
Mm, we're going to get into this. Shout out to all my secret squirrels. I'm not going to mention y'all by name, but we were spilling tea behind the scenes, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Brandy. What's up, Brandy? Good morning. Joni, your earmuffs look so cute this week. I saw you on Instagram. I need some earmuffs. It's perfect for, like, girls with froze. All right, so we're going to start off on Instagram. Um, we're going to start off with my beautiful face. Y'all see my pictures? Me in eighth grade with braces. Brace. This is the first set of three. This is me. Don't I look the same? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's the same? My lips. My lips. I love it. My soup coolest. All right. Here's my homie. This is my homie, Greg. We still friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at me going to the formal in college without no, no without that much makeup. Look at me. I'm only bringing this up, y'all, because 41 Savage is almost here. 11, 10, Wednesday. Tip me. Okay. Venmo. At Mika Gazden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will accept and expect gifts. Yup, yup, yup. Yup. Yeah. Shout out to the homie. Look at <laughs> baby meek, skinny meek. All right, so yeah, uh, I want to start there, but let's let, let's get back to let's, let me see if I can get my stories. Let me get back to my stories. This is why I brought it up. <laughs> back when my metabolism wasn't playing games. So yeah, if you um if you're not on Instagram, check out a, check out Charles Network Activist Network on Instagram. And let me see the next one. Let's see. Shout out to Gilda Cobb Hunter. This is also on the radar. So, y'all, we got an announcement. We got an announcement. We got somebody running against Nancy Mays. Let me see if I can. <laughs> the Dems got the Dems got a viable candidate running against Nancy Mays. <laughs> oh, 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 come on, come through. Don't know nothing about the young lady, but we're gonna learn together. We know that she works at MUSC. It's at Andrews MD. Shout out to Gilda Cobb Hunter. The algorithm served her up first, and then I saw subsequently, of course, Thomas Novelli from uh, the Post and Courier has covered it as well. Shout out though. We're gonna learn more. I haven't I haven't seen too much on her yet, right? Let me see. Pause it right here. But yeah, scoop. So Thomas Novelli apparently got the scoop. Plans to announce her run for SC1. She's the first Democratic candidate to announce her run against. Dun, dun, dun. Nancy Mays. Okay. So um, there's a story in Postal Curry. We might get to it. Might not. She's on Twitter. Um, and she's like, and I think I, um, yeah, I think I did. Ooh. Stop it. Stop it. All right. Let me see. Boom. Boom. Let it play naturally. I don't know why it popped out. Um, and I think, yeah, here, I see here, I showed um, a little screen grab. I know it's really tiny, y'all. But um, basically, Marlon Kimson, Bakari Sellers, um, some high-profile high notables have uh, sh shared her, uh, the, shared the Thomas Novelli piece. So um, Mandy Powers, Norell, all of that. That's very important to know. So viable candidate there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in this corner yeah no jokes right right <laughs> lol let me see the bar is so low let me see it looks like she believes in climate change the bar is low and unfortunately can she fog a mirror i know right <laughs> can she fog a mirror what's up joy brown if you're watching over on facebook what's up what's up good morning good morning so that, but that's not why i came to instagram not to just show you my baby pictures and um oh not to just show you my baby pictures and that and but to like, oh, let me see, let me see. Can I go to my um? Let me see if I can go to. Can I go to my archives? Let me see. I'm saying y'all all my stuff. Ooh, do, 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 do. I want to go to my saved stories. Can I do that from here? I know on my phone. Let me see profile. No. Oh, you know what? That's actually good because I don't want to read my DMs. That's actually good. So we'll go right here. Boom, boom. Boop, boop, boop. Y'all, let me see. Where's she at? Is this it? This is... No, this ain't her. Oh, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me get. Sorry, Facebook. I'm going to close you out real quick. Let me get to it, though. Because I'm like, what is going on? Let me see. Boom. And I sent her, oh, yeah, 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 here we go, here we go. I got this really wrong. Yeah, okay. So y'all know Greek Freak, Ty Rutherford, right? Let me open up Facebook. No, Facebook, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to close the chat. But if you're here, just say, hey, drop it in the chat. I'll catch it later. So <sighs> y'all know 
Todd Rutherford. This is his ex-wife who's currently, I shouldn't just call her ex-wife. She is currently the Richland County coroner. But I just wanted to give you for context, you know how critical I am of all Dems. All of them, anyone, equal opportunity, smoke giver. Um, so basically, um, Nida, I believe is pronounced, Nida Rutherford, she's a former um, spouse of Todd Rutherford. That is that is actually relevant, um, although her, her, her identity transcends her marriage status to another to a man. <laughs> um, but basically, she I, I never went on her IG. I didn't know she had an IG. Um, I've seen her, of course. She's usually uh, flanking. Um, she'll be in the mix with notables like Mia, uh, Mia uh, McLeod, who's running for governor, she, uh, the Tamika Isaac Devine campaign, but also Tamika Isaac Devine in general. I didn't know she was like, I, I didn't, this is just me offering up my, you know, my brand of commentary. I did not know she was like kind of influencer ish. I didn't know that. I didn't know she was. So now Rutherford moving on to um, Megan makes a lot of sense. I'm just keeping it real. I'm not no shade, no shade, no shade, no shade at all. Get it. She's a beautiful woman. Um, she's a mother. She's ambitious. I didn't know she was like, but I didn't know she was like an influencer and a coroner, which is an interesting mix. Wow. Right. Right. Was that, is that, is that Gucci? Oh, wow. We got Gucci. Okay. I did not know this. I'm learning a lot about uh, Columbia politics, though. Um, yeah, get it, get it, get it. I'm a fan of a crop top. You'll see me. In, if you meet me in person, you'll see me in a crop top. Yep. So anyway, I'm bringing you to this page because, look, shout out to the secret scroll, the homie who brought, put me on to this. And we're going to get, we're going to, so this, <laughs> let me read it for you. Let me read the post. And I love how, like, influencers use just a, uh, come up with almost any excuse to post a really gorgeous pictures of themselves, right? Right. <laughs> so let me let me read the caption from my phone. Okay, some people out here lying. It's a it's too long. I'm not gonna read the whole the whole um, book that she wrote here. It says some people out here lying. A sermon, and in parentheses she says, please remember to read this in your most Southern Baptist preacher voice, clear as throat. Please hold on to your edges and wigs. She goes on to say that, you know, someone's lying about her. Um, she says, I want to come to you from the book of uh, I Got Receipts. She's, she's using this whole Bible analogy, right? So she, she enumerated things. I don't know if you, you can't see it, but she enumerated things like, one, keep the names of others you've never spoke to out your mouth. I guess I'm violating that rule right there. Um, I don't know how much I agree with that, free speech. Uh, lies may spread, but they... Uh, but they stop at the truth. Okay, it's number two. Number three, there's always a receipt for the bill. Your mouth and lies can't cash. You can't cash bills, but we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. Uh, congregation, she's going on with this. Uh, anyway, she's talking about lies, 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 lies. People lying on her. They Her mouth, her name is in their mouth, uh, right? The Lord, period. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of like, yeah. Let me skip down to the bottom. P.S. Vote for... Um, she's telling you to vote for certain city council people. She's saying that, um, um, she's list, lifting up the need for candidates to have bipartisan support. And then the dismount is, and I'm supporting Tamika Isaac Devine for mayor. Go run, tell that too. So I asked my secret squirrels, I was like, yo, what's good? And I'm not going to divulge too much because I don't want to tip nobody off. Um, <clears throat> so their understanding is that, um, so that she right here, uh, is it Naida? Naida Rutherford, uh, the former spouse of Todd Rutherford, the Greek freak, um, that she, where's Kia? When I, Kia, you here? Oh Kia, oh, Kia, you are here. Kia, you're here. Good job. Thank God, Kia, you're here. Um, let me know if I got to pull you up. Are you ready to talk on Bluetooth? I got you. All right, so basically there were rumors that she was supporting Republicans, that Naida Rutherford was, was supporting Republicans. I don't know how big this thing got, but it got pretty big, right? Um... So I guess someone was challenging her support of the Democratic Party. <clears throat> um, so someone else took it to, and I'm not going to mention another person's name, took it to a whole nother level. But I will say this. Um, there's a person. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. There's a person that is. Um, okay. Support Bailey. Bailey had, and let me go back to her post. Did she, she say the name Bailey? Let me see at the bottom. No, 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 no. Okay. So somebody's in the mix. It says, um, 
Bailey, this person Bailey is getting a lot of criticism. Um, they're wrapped up in the campaign stuff, the Republican Democrat stuff. Supposedly Bailey has defended someone who's allegedly um, uh, 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 committed a, a sexual assault. Don't know about that. That's why I'm being very cautious. Allegedly, 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 allegedly. I'm not even mentioning the first name, the whole name of the Bailey person. Um, right. And like, whatever, there's some, some back and forth about who's supporting who. And it's just, to me, a lot of smoke. I need to find the fire though. I'm seeing a lot of smoke. Um, but the, the, this, the, the, the last thing that the person says is that this stuff sounds really fishy. Um, and she, this person says that I think this shows how incestuous these circles are. Everybody knows everybody and all up in, in the circles all overlap for sure. There's something shady going on. Right. And so, um, how I know something shady is going on because let me see, let me hop, hop over to Twitter. Cause this was what really put Columbia on the map this morning. And we're going to get to a local news wrap up hope roundup. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, um, let's go to my profile and my likes. Jesus. Um, so yeah, so I responded to this after some of my friends lifted this up. So this is Sam Johnson. Sam Johnson was running it for mayor of Columbia. Um, and you know, there was several candidates running. We know that now there's a runoff, uh, the runoff between, uh, Tamika Isaac Devine, who was seen as the front runner. So I, I don't know. She's still considered a front runner, but, um, uh, Tamika Isaac Devine and, uh, Mr. Rickenman are running, have a runoff, right? Uh, and that's in like a couple weeks, less than a couple weeks, right? So Sam, of course, he was eliminated. He came in third. He wasn't able to get to that threshold um, for a runoff. And so Sam, much like B Mayor Benjamin, issued what I would consider a tepid uh, letter of uh, letter of support. This is not an endorsement. This I, I know some people are calling. I know the state newspaper called it an endorsement, but some other reporters who are on the ground in Columbia have stayed away from that word. I have as well, because this is not full throated at, at all. I don't know how to characterize this, but anyway, it says this. I'm proud of the campaign we ran. We focused on the issues and ran a clean campaign. We dare Columbia to imagine its future. Count, then it goes on to say Councilwoman Divine, who wrote this? Councilwoman Divine has been a leader here in Columbia for 20 years. She has served as mayor pro tem she has um she has a track record of bringing ideas like homeless courts to fruition um to better our community which i'm glad he lifted up those those points with her experience and an extensive tenure uh it is my hope that she will be um it is my hope listen it is my hope that she will be the conscientious principal mayor that our city deserves sam johnson so to me that that sounded real like that sounds like sideways shade to me. I might be reading too much into it, right? Maybe it's my Jersey, you know, uh, skepticism, but that's not an endorsement, right? That's a listing of, a list, listing of her bona fides that you can find on LinkedIn and then saying that it's my hope, right? And we saw this with Mayor Benjamin. And not only that, I want y'all to peep the timing. So this went out 6.39 at, on Saturday night, November 6th. That's called a news dump. That's like, I'm going to throw this out here. I ain't, you didn't do it Sunday. You didn't, you didn't hit up, you didn't hit up a local reporter and say, Hey, I want to, I want to give you this exclusive statement. You didn't queue it up. Nothing, nothing. It came with nothing. It came with no, uh, no, no, no appetizer, no dessert, no nothing, no presentation, no nothing, no condiments like this. This served up, this was served up cold and like, no, take this back. But I, that's my commentary. When you look at, um, then, so, so then this came out, right. Then I, I scrolled down because I'm like, I'm like, I, I don't know Nicola personally. I believe I've been in rooms with Nicola, but Nicola tweeted this. If you don't support divine for mayor, we will never forgive you. I promise. Lord have mercy. I'm like gauntlet. Let me open back up Facebook. I'm like gauntlet. Good morning. If you're watching on Facebook, good morning. Say hi in the chat in the comment section. Um, I was like, what? And then I scroll down, right? I don't know Jalen Elrod. Let me see who Jalen is. Third vice chair of South Carolina Democratic Party. I love when I when I like look, men can chime in. I'm not saying men can't chime in, 
but it's been my experience here in, in South Carolina with that when when men from the party establishment chime in, they always try to chime in when they make you make you quiet, to tell you to stand down, to tell you to take notes or something. Anyway, I don't know Jalen, so I don't want to impugn his integrity at all. So Jalen says that isn't isn't this statement showing his support? Not knowing Nicole, not knowing what's going on. This to me means that she's not seeing the level of support that she probably think is appropriate for Tamika Isaac Divine. And maybe she's not seeing explicit support in other areas, right? You scroll down and no, Jalen, um, to your to answer your question, Jalen, no, that's not that's not support. That's a very tepid like acknowledgement that she's running for office and a hope. A hope. An acknowledgement of her of her accomplishments and a hope. That's not an endorsement, right? That's not that's not an endorsement, right? So what's up, Lisa Izzo? How you doing? Lisa, did you go to the Blue Jamboree this weekend? Just asking. Just random question. Um, then Nicola says, words are not action, right? I'm going to listen to black women, right? Words are not action, she went on to say, right? Y'all following me? Y'all following me? All right, okay. Then here we go. Here we go. Let me see. What, what do I want to hit with this? Let me see what I want to hit with this. I guess we can do... But not celebratory, not celebratory air horns, just like take notice air horns. Then you got Michael Wukili. Y'all be like, Mika, who the hell is Michael Wukili? Michael is one of the top Democratic operatives in the state. Um, I got to know Michael Wukila up close and personal. I've been in his house um, when I was the campaign manager for Jen Gibson, who was running for the 99, uh, 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 the 99 um, district. Um, so I got up and close, close and personal. Um, Michael is what you would call, I guess, I guess the bros would like to call him a big deal. Um, Michael also, um, very early on before I even got spicy like that, like that, um, he pulled me aside, called me out the blue while I was running the campaign, called me out the blue. was like, I'm getting word. Now, I don't mind divulging this. And I'm, Mike can feel how he feels. He was like, I'm getting word through the grapevine that, you know, you don't get along with the black men in the clergy. And I was like, what? And I, and, and at that time, I think I mentioned this before I had no involvement, no, like no real involvement with black men in the clergy shit. I was going to bedside Baptist with Reverend Sheets. Like I haven't been in a church. Sorry, mommy, daddy. I haven't been in a church and I mean it, right? If it ain't a funeral or something like that. So um, he was saying that, and, and and he's a he's a big deal. He's got the trust and the confidence of those like um, Mayor Benjamin, also Bakari Sellers, right? Um, he is a speechwriter. So this dude right here, um, I forgot what his, um, it doesn't matter. He's not black. <laughs> but let me tell you, he can write. And you can, you might, you might, oh, hey, Lisa, I see your answer. He can write now. He a good speech writer. He can write and make it sound like a black man raised up in the Baptist church. Like he he can write now. And Michael can do more than write. He's a great he was a good comms. He was a solid comms um dude. He worked on the Bernie campaign. He got me the interview with um Nina Turner. Um at when Nina Turner and Dan Danny Glover came to Wadmer Law with um Representative Gilliard, he made sure that um I got interviews and you know, that's his job too, right? Get as get as much exposure as possible. Um so it was a it was a mutual situation. But listen to how he chimes in. May I suggest that you read before you comment? I love it when they talk. This is what Tyler do too. Tyler and Michael, they cut from the same cloth. Like y'all, y'all think y'all cutthroat because all y'all do is come up and like try to keep black women in their place. And you know, we run shit. We, you know, if we really, really got activated, like how we used to do over here in the state, you know, we run rough shot over y'all. Y'all know this. So this whole mansplaining, let me talk over you. First of all, Michael, you got bigger fucking fish to fry. So why are you up in some tweet like him and Tyler kill me with that jumping in there searching, searching mentions and shit for their candidates or whoever they, they helping out. This shit get them under my skin and it's not anger. It's just me checking you. Right. This is just like a pickup game of basketball. You know what I mean? We foul hard. Right. Ain't no refs here. So I'm talking real tough, but this ain't no bridge burning. That's the thing in South Carolina politics. They put a premium on on being polite. I don't I, that's not, anywhere else. You really, really trying to get it in. Fuck that. Right. Fuck that. So I'm keeping it real. Like you in the, you in this, you in this Twitter thread, right? Mike, and you, you, be, you bigger than this. You, but you in here, you want to, you want to put, put uh, Nicola, Nicola, and I don't, I don't know her. I don't know her situation. I ain't vouching for her specifically, but if she got something to say. She got something on her chest. Let her talk. Let her talk. Let her talk. You, you know, like Michael is, is really well known in, in this establishment circles. So I don't even know why he wasted his time, but this is what they do. And then says, um, she said, where the dollars at? Now, I don't know what she referencing, 
But again, she's saying action. Show me action. She wants Sam Johnson to show some show some real support, material support, right? Right. And then it says, um, yeah, just calling her silly. I think that was bad taste. Um, Michael will kill her. Um, so to be clear, you're suggesting the only way to support a candidate is to give them money or simply threaten. See, why are you even going back and forth? Right? This is crazy. I know y'all might like, <laughs> I know y'all probably like Mika. Like, but I hope y'all following me, right? Um, and you know, one, one thing I like about, I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to, nah, I don't want to do that. I want to just increase the tweet, make it bigger. One thing I um one thing I like about being in this package, being in this black woman's body, um now now I can't do it shit. Now I can't do it. I, I can't be stealth like I used to. Um one thing about being me, well I I might be cuz I'm usually if y'all see me out in public, I look like a gym teacher. Um you know who snuck out on, on, on you know during the lunch planning period to go to Trader Joe's to get um, you know, Trader Joe's sushi. That's what I look like when you see me in public. Shout out to shout out to Nicole who saw me. Not not little mom Nicole, another Nicole who saw me at Target the, uh, yesterday. It was so dope. I met you for the first time. Cool. But when you see me, I might I might be able to blend in. But basically, so when I worked for Black Voters Matter, I was working during the Democratic primary, right? And one thing I love about me is that I can be stealthy, right? Because nobody's really looking at. The black chick, like the regular degular black chick, just eating um the 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 you know eating from the 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 breakfast buffet you know at the at the hotel um at the hotel that's right next to the airport. What does that mean? So if I'm at the hotel that's right next, if I'm at the Embassy Suites or I'm at whatever the Hilton or whatever that is over there by the Wendy's, and it's during the primary. What what that mean, y'all? That mean that everybody probably staying like your operatives are staying there. Um, you know, your staff is to stay in there. Maybe, maybe, maybe an HBO celebrity or two that's endorsing Bernie. Maybe they stay in there too, right? So I'm in, I'm eating there, eating my grapefruit, whatever, whatever. And I'm, I'm in the corner, right? And I'm, I'm just like, he, I see Michael come in. He don't know. He probably don't even recognize me no more. And I got my head down like this. This is during the Democratic primary. So that's when all of them was coming, all the Democratic campaign people. So I'm back there in the back. And I'm just eating and I'm, and then they, then I'm like, oh man, I don't want him to see me. So then I see them like, um, just in case he could recognize me, even though whatever. And then they like, they make their way over to where I am. And I start seeing people I recognize like Jessica Bright, um, and, and who, who ended up running the, the, the Bernie campaign for the South Carolina at the Quadro left. And I'm seeing them come in and then I see Philip Agnew, right? Come in, Philip Agnew, y'all, y'all know who that is. I see Philip Agnew come in. Let me see if I spell his name right. Yeah, here we go. No, Agnew. Did I spell it right? Probably two L's. Then I see Philip Agnew come in. Here we go. Right? Um, Dream Defenders um, was, I don't know what position he held on the Bernie campaign, but he comes in, right? Big muckety muck, working families party, all that, right? Um, I'm, I'm just telling all the trade secrets. That's why, but well, it's fine. Um, access is overrated. What's up? What's up, Abe Jenkins? I got that email, um, from, um, from the, uh, young lady. I'm going to call her today, Mr. Abe Jenkins. Um, so I'm in, so Michael starts talking to, to Philip Agnew, right? And I just, I ain't going to say the joke over, but basically Philip is like, damn, you act, you, you like a brother. Like, Mike, dang, I thought, you, like, you got flavor. Like, he's, he's commenting, Philip, and I'm ear hustling, right? I'm eating the grapefruit in the back, right? And I'm ear hustling. And uh, he's like, yeah, you like a brother, whatever, whatever. He makes some kind of gross, and Mike makes some, Michael makes some kind of gross joke about, like, you know, his, whatever, whatever his ethnicity, whatever, being, like, akin to being black, right? Some gross joke about it. It was corny. Um, real, duh. But Philip is like, damn, you you got flavor, whatever. Then I see old boy from um, Insecure come in. Y'all know, um, what's his name? Secure cast. I can't remember his name. Here, here, here. Kendrick Sampson. So Kendrick Sampson comes in, and I'm like, oh, shit. I really, it's like, and I'm just ear hustling, right? Let me see if I can see a picture. He's cute. He looks my ex-boyfriend. Um, let me see if I can get a picture. That's big. Yeah, so Philip Philip Samson, uh, Philip Samson. <laughs> Kendrick Samson comes in. Um, he comes in because he's a surrogate with the Bernie campaign, right? Open up, open image. No, I didn't mean to do that. Too much caffeine. 
So yeah, he comes in and I'm like, oh shit, right? And so I'm just listening to Mike and Mike, what, what I'm what I'm gathering, um, and he was cool. Uh, this dude Kendrick is legit. I like him as a, like as, as far as celebrities go, pretty cool, really decent politics that seem to be lining up with how he moves in real life, right? So um, you said Michael and Philip have um, baby pics on it. I know, right? You saw that, right? So, uh, but no, but Philip he comes in and then Kendrick goes to the bathroom and then I see my 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 homegirl. Uh, Brittany, who um, worked for Black Voters Matter, she's now moved on. But Brittany comes, I say, yo, 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 master. I, I kind of, I skulk out. As soon as he comes in, because like, you know, whatever, I skulk out. But I'm just, I just listened to that exchange between Philip Agnew and Michael Wakila. And it, it just, to me, kind of like, kind of confirms and solidifies how like, how things go down, right? When when people think no one's listening, how men kind of just keep uplifting men and and like the gross, you know, it wasn't it wasn't that bad. It was a distasteful joke. It was a distasteful joke, I would say, about, you know, you know, you you him basically being invited to the cookout. That's my contextualization. That's not the contextualization. Um but I thought I thought it was um I thought it was a corny joke. Let me go back to that Twitter thread. But um but yeah it, it's just Mike Michael is is definitely especially during those times where where uh, these campaigns where South Carolina is more relevant uh, or when a race in South Carolina is more relevant. And if, if Michael Wakila is on it, if Michael Wakila is on that campaign, it's definitely going to garner a lot of attention. Right. So um, but this is beneath Michael, I think, just going back and forth with with uh, Miss Hemphill here. I think that's um, that's. That's corny, but that's how it works. And I, I don't like the silencing here. I don't like how um, Michael has has you know tried to warn me to be watch my step because I'm a bridge burner, or whatever. Um, I don't like that. I don't like this. I don't like him acting like he invited to the cookout. I don't like. I don't want to get too far into the tea, but I don't. I don't like. Um, also, I don't like how. Um, I don't know. Michael has like a wide berth and like, and like basically he can say and do a lot of things. And I don't know if that's really extended to black women and black women operatives. I'm saying all this to say, I'm saying all this to say that take a look at the Tamika Isaac divine race. Take a look at the, look, look at how these men endorse her going back to Instagram. Look at how these men endorse her. Right. Again, she's not above criticism herself. Right. She's not above criticism. Right. But if you look at the tone and center and she's she's racking up black male um, endorsements. That is a big that's a that that's a big signal there. Um, black men endorsement. Oh, she's racking up a couple. There you go, Heather Bauer. So that was the name mentioned in the in the thing. We ain't, we gonna get into that. But yeah, just 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 take a look at some of these in, in, endorsements and whatnot, and how tepid they, tepid they seem to be. I don't know about Meryl Johnson. Um, look at Jazz. Friend to the pod. Look at Jazz. Jazz will find a campaign now. Shout out. Shout out, Jazz. Right? Go ahead, get it, girl. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot going on. Just take a look. And, and, and again, I'm going to continue to just holler at. I'm just going to continue to talk about how black women in politics just have a really tough time. Regardless if you, you're voting or you support Tamika as divine or you, wanted, you were rooting for Sam or rooting for anyone else in the race. Um, I'm looking at, like, this Misha Goss behind the scenes regarding her her race. And, really, I'm enthralled. And when you got, um, and when you got, what's her name? You know, when you got influencers slash coroners like out here <laughs> spilling tea and admonishing folks and keep my name out your mouth and all of that. I'm going to see if she tagged. Did she tag the frames in the, oh no, she didn't tag the frames. Okay. Um, you know, that's very interesting. So they, they're, they're making, they're not making a secret that, you know, there's some drama going on behind the scenes and I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Oh my gosh. Jesus. Pretty woman, pretty woman. All right. That's my tea. Got uh, 20 minutes till Crystal come. Crystal's coming. For those who just joined me, hi, welcome. This this is Mic'd Up. We're gonna have Crystal Matthews join um, the Mic'd Up uh, live stream at uh, in the, within the nine o'clock hour. So at nine o'clock, I'm gonna send her the link, and she should be joining us here um, on 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 the live stream. All right, let's get to let's get to let's get to some news. Let's get to some. Good morning, Evelyn. You missed all the tea. I don't know how much tea you got. Let's take a look at some local. Um, some local news uh, for this 20, 20, 20 minutes before Crystal joins us via phone. Um, hey, why not? Since we're in Columbia, let's stay there for a second. 
In-person absentee voting will begin tomorrow for the Columbia runoff races for mayor and at-large city council. Columbia residents with a qualifying reason can vote at 2020 and 2011 Hampton Streets between 8.30 and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. The office will be closed Thursday for Veterans Day. In the mayor's race, unofficial results from the first hey, election. So Councilman Daniel Rickman received 44% of the vote. Councilwoman Tamika Isaac Devine came in second with 30% since neither were able to secure a majority a runoff was required. Oddity Brussels and Tyler Bailey will face off for the at-large seat. The runoff election officially begins on the 16th. Okay, officially, but you can do the absentee. So if you're in the Richland County area, or rather you're in Columbia, you're a resident of Columbia, um, make sure you, you, do your, you do your duty, do your due diligence. Um, one thing that's definitely captivated us, bringing it back to the low country, again, this is a local news roundup, um, bringing it back to the low country, real, 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 real quick time out. I know I said a lot, but I thought that was important. I thought the whole mission gospel was important. Just if that, uh, if anyone's questioning all that, um, I know those watching, I know you probably think I burnt the bridge. I didn't burn shit. That wasn't already fucking dilapidated already. Like it, it was done. It was done. It is finished. <laughs> Mika hangs her, Mika hangs her head on the cross. It is finished. It was done. <laughs> right. All right. 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 What's up? Is this um Miss Je Miss Christy Jefferson? What's up on Facebook? If you're watching, all right. But anyway, just transitioning back to local news and whatnot. Um, thank y'all for chiming in. Yeah, he was very aggro. Um, Nicole, Michael was very aggressive for no fucking reason. All right, so yeah, the flood. Have y'all been downtown? Right, I've been downtown. I was I was going to Mount Pleasant this weekend. Um. And I saw all the streets blocked off. All the streets blocked off downtown. Lockwood was blocked off. Parts of Morrison, you know, north of Morrison was blo blocked off. It was a mess um, for th like three days. So let's take a look at this. Um, thank you. These potentially historic high tides have... This is from the 5th, so this is not relatively recent. We're going to hop to Live 5 in a second. Country officials preparing for flooding throughout hey, this entire weekend. News 2's Jordan Siopa spoke with Charleston Leader and joins us live from Haygood Avenue. Jordan, really all hands on deck this weekend. Yeah, Kia. We're going to talk about tell it. Me they're used to dealing with king tides, but tomorrow with tides expected to be over eight feet and on top of the rain we're seeing, they say they're taking even more precautions. Right. Can't, so I'm, I'm actually, it's worth it to try to go ahead and get um, a, a, a more recent news story about the flooding downtown because um, they've been all over. The paper's been all over. I got the Post and Curry up here. Um, we want to sidestep the library card and just go directly to the, the periodicals on the online. Um, but let's let's take a look at this um, Monday morning, just a, a recent story about the flooding. Well, first alert, flood advisory. Let's see. We had the opportunity to speak to three black women. Okay. Lincoln's doing an ad about three black women. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's pause it, expand it, unmute it. This morning, we do have a coastal flood advisory in effect. Now, we don't expect flooding to be as significant, tidal flooding this morning as it was over the weekend, but still some street closures are likely, especially in places like downtown Charleston between about 9 o'clock and noon today. High tide in the Charleston Harbor is right around 1030. Finally, that storm system from the weekend pulling away got better as yesterday kind of wore on as we got into I know, the afternoon. Evelyn. Finally, some sunshine. Well, no worries about those clouds coming back. It is all sunshine today and we'll warm up nicely. Still a little bit of a breeze out there today. But it was brisk. I opened up this this door right here um, and shoot, it was brisk. It was enough to wake me up. Um, L. Cool J, you said you live out in Hollywood. Hollywood, he said it's on, on the Twitch chat. High tide yesterday covered over half of the dock. First of all, Flex, you got a dock? <laughs> haven't seen haven't seen this bad since the storm's way back. Mm -hmm. You saw that, Flex, y'all? Her dock. You've got boat access, private boat access. <laughs> Highfalutin. <laughs> Let me stop. Um, yeah. You, you say, you know what won't stop it? Be me a billion dollar wall. You know what that is? <laughs> Quite accurate. Quite accurate. <laughs> right? Um, so, yeah but not as windy or gusty as it was throughout the weekend. 63 at noon will be in the upper 60s to around 70 for high this afternoon. Does drop down. Kia, you know Nancy ain't gonna talk about no goddamn climate. She Didn't she say Build Back Better's dead? 
Oh, I ain't even talking about infrastructure. Don't even get me started. It's so watered down, I'm, and I'm so pissed. I'm so pissed that I even, my, my piss offness was contagious because even my parents got pissed at how watered down the infrastructure bill is. They not even, like, they don't even want to talk about it. When those two Obama, Biden, sycophants don't, is mad, then you know, I don't even want to talk about it. Anyway, but she did say Bill Back was, was, was dead and all the climate change, the Green New Deal, uh, uh, yeah, climate denying, but you over there saving beagles, right, Kia? Over there saving, not not saying that beagles don't need to be saved, but you got what I'm saying, right? Let's let's um, oh wow, what the hell? All right, let's let's take a look at some. Let's see if there's any other relevant news or or top news here. Oh, this is interesting. You're right. These gas prices is not slot. Gas has been crazy. It's one of the reasons why I didn't hit the road this weekend and and do a car trip that I wanted to do. You know, because I'm in between gigs at the moment. No, I'm not. This is my job. All right. Um, let me see. Let's get the post and courier real quick. So for those who don't know, the Blue Jamboree was this weekend. I haven't been to the Blue. I blew, went to the Blue Jamboree about uh, a year before last. Of course, COVID hampered things last last uh, year. But this is what we're going to talk to Crystal part in part. Talk to Crystal about. She was at the Blue Jamboree. They had uh, Doug Jones. Uh, come in, you know, Doug Jones, shout out to um, Black Voters Matter that were, they were instrumental in, um, and he's no longer the senator in Alabama, but um, the mobilization efforts led largely by Black Voters Matter in Alabama during that race, that high profile race was very helpful. Um, I mean, well, his candidate was was crazy trash too, right? Um, but so U.S. Senator Doug Jones came down to rally local Dems. Um, yeah. And so we're going to, I'm going to talk to Crystal about it more. Uh, let's look at the pictures or let's look at the slideshow. Here's Crystal right here. So Crystal, um, Kia, you asked earlier and shout out to y'all. Thank you. I got you, B-Man. Shout out to y'all for supporting, um, supplementing some things that I might miss. Crystal's running for Senate. She's running against Tim Scott. She's not the only Democrat, however, running for Senate. Um, but today we will focus on her race. There's another black woman running, um, running like, um, uh, a Democratic black woman, I believe, running, I think, from the upstate or the Midlands. I'm not quite sure. Um, but Crystal's been um, out there killing it. She'll be here in about 10 minutes, y'all, about 12 minutes. We'll have Crystal call in. Um, but Crystal was at the Blue Jamboree. Um, as you can see, this is the room, indoor, masked up, kind of, uh, yeah. Um, let's keep going. Let me see. Just That's it? Just two pictures? I feel like I saw Matt. Must have been on, on Instagram. Um, there were a lot of pictures, I think, on Instagram. So let me just read a little bit from this. A North Charleston, Democrats from across the state and country, brave, cold. Oh, on, on Twitter. Brave, cold, steady rain um, on November 6th to celebrate the Blue Jamboree. The Charleston County Democratic Party's largest fundraiser of the year, Doug Jones, a former U.S. Senator for Alabama, rallied South Carolina Democrats, rattled by bruising losses. Uh, in the year in the off year elections, including a big win for Republicans in the Virginia's governor's race. Um, how many times have we heard in the past that you you know that you know Democrats are dead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Doug Jones trying to get people amped up. You know, I wonder if he bought t shirt gun t shirt cannons. Y'all ready for this? Dun 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 dun. Because they gonna need a lot. They gonna need a lot of pep. Um, let me see this. Let me see what B Man just dropped. Yeah, I'm going to give this to my parents, B-Man. Democrats quietly nix Biden's $100 billion for school modernization infrastructure package. Yeah, I'm on it. I'm on it. It's this U.S. new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me get this out of here. Let me get that out of here. Well, no, let's go to Twitter real quick because I think you'll see more. Like Bakari was in town. Um, Jamie Harrison was in town. Oh, there she go. Running running against um running against Nancy Mace. I'ma just hit like so I can follow this conversation. Yeah, I had some news to share. So we we saw that. When did she tweet this? This morning. Okay. So we watching it. We're watching Dr. Annie Andrews. See if we can get her on. See if she's gonna be um oh 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 sorry, oh, oh oh tough. I've seen lungs. You know, we got to stop for a, can a high pro high production value campaign video. Let's go. This, we watch this together. This is a this is a mic'd up exclusive. <laughs> this a, what's up, Jennifer Wicker, if you watching? This is a mic'd up exclusive. Some days in here can be pretty tough. 
I've seen lungs filled with COVID, kids fighting cancer, mm. a teenager who'd been shot in the spine, mm. and I was the one to tell him he'd never walk again. Since I was a little girl, I always cut. wanted to be a doctor. Look at them bang. My name is Dr. Annie Andrews. I'm a mom to three incredible kids, and even on the toughest days, I'm proud to call myself a pediatrician. I'm gonna start right there. I'm sorry, I'm gonna be annoying. Let me see. Okay. Um, okay, Crystal says she's ready. I got you. Yo, y'all, what y'all think? Drop in the chat. If y'all on Facebook or on Twitch, what y'all think already? First impressions. I wanna as they as they roll in. Woo! She's competent. She's a professional. I mean, Nancy's a professional too. She's she got credentials. Let's go. But right now, I believe Crystal. the failure of our elected officials to care about our children is the greatest threat facing our children. They don't have lobbyists or lawyers or million dollar super PAC. They should have played this at the Blue Jamboree. Let's go. Standing up for them. And that's why politicians here yep. Nicole, keep you got letting it. them down. From COVID to gun violence, to the quality of their schools, to the very air they breathe. So I'm doing something that was never part of my plan. I'm running for Congress, but my campaign is gonna be a little different. First, I'm always gonna tell you the truth, even when we don't agree. As a pediatrician, parents trust me to be completely honest with them, and that's what I'll be with you. And how about this? We're gonna focus on issues that matter most to the low country. Come on. Like getting past this pandemic, Come on. addressing climate change, protecting our coastline, fixing our roads, and yes, tackling gun violence, which is now the leading cause of death oh, in oh, our wait, kids. Hold up. That's that mother and man. That's that photo op inside the. Shout out to Jackie though. I love Jackie over here. Right here. That's the homie right there. Hey, look at look at Miss Izzo. Look at Miss Izzo. Okay. All right. How y'all doing? Our kids. This is my congresswoman, Nancy Mace. <gasps> and she isn't focused on any of that. espresso no more don't let me drink espresso no more <laughs> yes. this is my congresswoman nancy mace and she isn't focused on any of that i don't know what job she's auditioning for but it's not to represent us she's on tv nearly every day pushing extremism and conspiracy theories that only divide us more yeah. now listen that's called motherfucking bars nigga you know nothing about that Come through, Ed. <laughs> I done broke my heart. Come through. Ooh. She refuses to stand up to her own party and is more interested in being famous than effective. Look, I've never run for anything in my life, but I know this. Every election we say, wouldn't it be great if we could change the types of people we send to Washington? Well, this time, let's actually do it. I'm Dr. Annie Andrews, and for years you've trusted me with your kids. Now I'm asking you to trust me with your vote. I won't let you down. Oh, I love a good ad. Y'all don't understand. I'm, I'm weirdo. That was. <laughs> that was good. That was quality. That was a quality ad. I love it. I could watch. Y'all could just send me ads like, ooh, we could watch this. What you think? Woo. Dr. Annie. Annie, are you okay? Are you okay? Annie, you okay? Look at, look at the logo. Look at the logo. Look at the logo. That's dope. That's dope. Whoever did the logo, whoever did her campaign logo gets a fucking raise. I hate when people use double diamonds, but that's, if you're, get the, get the, come on. Come through. Look at that. Double di I'm pointing like y'all can see me point. Look at the double diamonds. Come on. I hate double diamonds as a cliche, but it works here because it looks like the letter A. Oh. <laughs> this is y'all understand. Sports and politics. It's the same thing. It fires off the same endorphins. All right, let me go ahead and get for me. For me, it does this. Let me go ahead and get Crystal her click her um uh, her link so we can just keep it going. Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Let me stop saying it. I always say that. Y'all hear it? All right, so I'm going to copy the link. 
See, invite friends, copy link. All right, here we go. She early. Here you go, ma. I love an early guest. I love it. Facebook, I'm sorry I had to close out the um the app. Uh so if you are commenting, you go ahead and comment. I can I can read later. I'm on the floor, right? You on the floor? She understood the assignment, kid. She understood the assignment. Let's go. Let's get ready for Crystal though. Jesus Christ. Y'all gonna be 41. I'm gonna be 41 in uh on Wednesday. Uh uh uh. Make sure you tip a bitch. All right, we're gonna wait for Crystal to come through. <laughs> I already gave her the uh the tips. Um, if y'all ever get this link, like B Man, you got it before. Kia, did you get it yet? I don't know. If, I can't remember if I brought you up, Kia, yet. But anyway, Allie's gotten the link. Just make sure your screen does not go into sleep mode or go dark. Just keep it open. Keep the app open. Do not disturb. On here she go. Hey. Yo yo yo. What's good? All right, people, can y'all hear her? I want. Just let me know if y'all can hear her. All right, I'm gonna give good you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Don't let your don't let your screen go dark. This this because that way it'll probably time out. But yes. Okay. All right. Let me make sure they can hear you. Do a little. Let me ask them. Yep. They got thumbs up. I'm gonna give you a round of applause, Crystal. Yes. Merry <laughs> Christmas. Yes. <laughs> What's up, girl? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Um, I wanted to have you on. First of all, thank you for um, being so responsive. Um, last minute request, but I'm sure you're probably the bell of the ball because the Blue Jamboree just passed and I'm sure people want your attention. But I, I wanted folks, some of my some of my viewers here ha did not know about your campaign and I wanted to help at least broaden your exposure, get the word yes. out. Um, you, you are one of the most candid and authentic people I've ever met, let alone politicians that don't even really go together with po wow. politics wow <laughs> but but you can call me an elected official an elected oh i love it i love it okay <laughs> so i got your pretty picture up there you're the most photogenic um elected official i know go ahead and tell people introduce yourself to people who might not know you or know what you're going what you're about to what you're about to do this this uh election season okay so I am Representative Crystal Matthews. Um, as she said, I'm already elected in the South Carolina State House in my second term for District 117. Uh, I'm a single mother of five, and my newly uh, acquired role now is running for the U.S. Senate. I didn't acquire it, but I, I chose to get in that because I feel like we don't have any real representation out here, like for working families, for women, for minorities. Um, you know, everybody likes to pander to us, but when it's time for the rubber to really meet the road, we get nothing. Mm -hmm. And then when you say we, are you talking like speaking from a democratic perspective from like, just as a mom, as a, you know, what how I, I'm speaking, at, I'm speaking as all the things that I just named as a mother, as a woman, as a minority, like, yo, I mean, when it's time to vote, women carry the vote. And, and I said this on my um, live the other day. Even in the Republican Party, white women carry the vote, but they don't want, they don't give them no shine. But it's cool. Mm -hmm. w women, minorities, my young young people, you know, th those are always the talking point. Mm -hmm. When you listen to people's platforms, mm -hmm. it, th those are always the talking point, except for the fact that they never really give us the things we need to drive. Yeah, yeah. You so, so don't. So those are my people. When I say we, I mean those people. Yeah. Crystal, can you can you take us back a little bit to where I first kind of met you? I encountered you at a Democratic convention. That's back when I was working with the, on the Jim Gip, the Jen Gibson campaign, um, and that's when I met you. You had just can you just tell people a little bit of your origin story? Um, yeah, I, I don't so, want to. Yeah. Man, when you met me, I was brand spanking new. <laughs> I didn't know anybody or anything. I was kind of like a spectator, honestly. <laughs> I was watching, yeah. uh, which I learned a lot from watching, but. So in, um, in 2018, uh, I ran for office for the first time and I won, right? So I'll just take you back to how that kind of started. Yeah. I mean, I was just like anybody else. You know, I'm a working mom. I have a single mom of five. I go to work in the morning, take my kids. I do sports. I buy Gatorade and shit, eat out of my purse. You know, that's my typical day. And I would come home in the evenings and I don't watch a lot of TV. So I would read. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, at this time I had been through some things, had been through a divorce and stuff. And I had some anxiety, some depression, just from stress. I learned a lot about what stress does to your body. I had no idea. Oh yeah. And so I was 
in my bed one night and I was on my phone reading an article and it was about midterm elections and why they're important. And it blew my mind that I did not understand the connection between my life as I live it and politics, Mm -hmm. state politics, federal politics. Like I had no idea that it was so directly connected. It wasn't because I didn't care. I just didn't know. Mm -hmm. And so I fell asleep reading that article I woke up the next morning and I called my best friend who I called twin. And I said, yo, I think I'm going to run for the seat. And she was like, yes, let's do it. And I was like, wait, <laughs> um, th- I think this requires you to ask me more questions. <laughs> like, and she was like, no, you know, you already volunteer, you know, me and my kids, we love volunteering. So we volunteer, um, for the homeless. We volunteer on Christmas, we Thanksgiving, you know, we volunteer all the time. And she was like, it's just the next step. So I was like, okay, well, um, how do we do it? So, you know, we pulled out everybody's best friend, Google, and we Googled where to go, how to register and what to take. And I was like, when you want to go? She was like, whenever. So we got everything that Google listed for us to get and went down there and I registered and Mika, we were so happy. Like, like, woo, I felt like I had took a step, right? Yeah. I was excited. Um, we took a picture of me outside the registration office saying I registered except for the fact that I didn't know what to do next. So I went back to Google and I Googled what comes next. And Google told me to campaign at a very high level, of course. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't know how to campaign. A few people reached out to me from the democratic side, maybe um, um, Melissa Watson and a few others invited me to a meeting, but you know, they were so far advanced that what they were saying was well over my head. I had no idea. I was kind of in pre-K and I felt like everybody else was in high school. Mm. So, um, to no avail, I really just fundraised through my family and friends and I raised about $720 and I still flipped that seat. Yeah. You, and it was wait, 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 wait. You didn't just, you didn't just, you, first of all, y'all, y'all see how humble she is. This is who she really is too. She ain't even trying to be humble. Not only was she a, a neophyte when it comes to electoral politics, she had just moved from, can I say that you just moved from another state, right? Right. Yeah. So I've been here, but yeah, I'm from Ohio originally. Okay. No, no, no. I'm going to, I'm going to just ask you quick, quick, rapid fire. Move from Ohio, right? You were at yeah. that time you were working for who? Yeah. What would say? Bowen. Bowen. <laughs> Bowen. <laughs> How many kids? As an engineer and planner. And yep. Five kids. Five kids, y'all. Like you already heard her say, divorce. And not only did she flip that seat as a first time candidate, she made history as the first black woman to hold down that seat. Yeah. And that now that's where I started getting vocal because no one talked about that part. No one, no one mm-hmm. used your story, Crystal. That your story should be the cornerstone story to recruit more diverse candidates. And I'm so shocked that we don't lift up your example a little bit more. But we're going to fast forward. We're going to fast forward. You but you know, I was actually told that uh-huh. no, they would when I got elected and I went to the state house. You know, somebody I won't say who told yeah. me. <laughs> you know, I would never tell people to do what you did. Ooh. I was like, oh, oh, well. Mm. There's that. Okay. Well, right. that's why that's why we got Ubers and stuff right now. Like that's why we got a gig economy now because people are finding ways work around things that work around for things that we've done conventionally. There, you know, there's always new ways to innovate, and I think you streamline the process. And I think by not sharing that is is not is injurious to the Democratic Party. Um, because you, I agree. yeah. So so let's fast forward. You you considered that pre K. You cut your teeth. You learn. You've been learning on the job. Like you said, you're currently holding it down. Um, tell people again what district. Or uh, you're you're representing? I'm in District 117, which is Goose Creek, Gladson, North Charleston, and now Somerville. You know these these lines have expanded. So. Oh yeah, the the Jerry, we're gonna get to the redistricting conversation on, on one day. So so now fast forward, you decided to throw your hat in the ring to run for Senate. Can you tell p- folks about that that uh, you know decision? Yeah, you know when you look at South Carolina, Mika. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned that I thought, you know, I was cutting my teeth and I was in pre-K. I actually thought I was going to be behind. But what I found out was that I'm not behind at all. And the reason why I'm not behind is because I'm still connected to the people. I'm connected to the way we live, the way we function and what we need. And so I actually ended up being ahead of most people. Mm-hmm. And when we look at the U.S. Senate race, we have two male senators. Um, I'm not going to delve into their personal lives, but let's just say they ain't living what we live in. So... <laughs> 40% of this state is single parents. Mm. 
70 mm-hmm. percent of this state is working families mm-hmm. and 55 percent of the voting population in the state is women so with all that being said like how do they represent us collectively? They don't. They don't collectively represent us or our needs. If you look at Tim Scott's voting record, he votes against everything for women, children, oh. school. Yep. I mean, if we only if we only got what they voted for, we wouldn't have anything. Mm. I mean, we would be broke down and desolate, like mm. for real, because they're not voting for any of the things that we really, really need here in the state. And even the infrastructure bill, um, with as bad as, as we have it right now. Yeah. And don't get me started on the budget because oh, yeah. we're set to be over budget by what a billion was the article that just came out or yep. something like that. Yep, yep. State governments were never created to make money. Pe- mm. I don't know if people know this, right? <laughs> so state governments were never created to be prop. Um, what's the word? Prop, prop, prosperous. Oh, prosperous. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Make a prop, make a profit. That was never the point. The point was to make enough money to operate, to have the needs met. Right. Mm -hmm. But we're over and we still are not handling our business. I keep saying we're having dessert before we have dinner Mm -hmm. because the priorities are not being met, but we out here doing all these pet projects, Mm -hmm. all these feel good projects. And that's the problem with eating too much dessert first. Mm -hmm. It tastes good and it'll make you feel good. But if you eat too much of it, It'll give you a stomach ache. A lot of a lot of photo ops going on for sure. Um, let let me ask you this. Oh man, <laughs> let me let's bring it to the blue jamboree. So th- your message is resonating. You can't see this, but your message is resonating with a lot of the people who are watching right now, watching on Twitch. Um, when you take your message to places like the blue jamboree, how are people responding to what you have to say, what you have to offer? Oh man, the response is just overwhelming. Uh, it is so awesome, the support that I have and the response that people um, have to my speaking and the way I speak. And uh, I'm telling you, like, uh, it gives me energy. It's the breath of life into my campaign, honestly, because I'm just really trying to speak truth to power. And I like that people understand my analogies. I'm known for being a plain speaking individual. Yes. You don't have to use 15 letter words in order to help people. Un- the, the point of us being public service is to help people understand mm. so that they can get involved because this is not an I situation. What am I going to do for you? It's a we situation. What are we going to do? Mm. Mm. Yeah. So I'm glad that people are res- re- resonating. Before I ask you where people can can head to to donate and support you, before I get to that, I wanted to know whether or not you can please chime in on um, what I've been very vocal about. Um, and you can you can go where you wherever you want to go. Um, but it's about the boys club that I'm I'm seeing. Before you hopped on, we, we we've been looking at the mayoral race in, in Columbia and and look. We, I've I've been let me not pu- let me not pull in my viewers. I've been scrutinizing. You know what I feel is like tepid support for for women who run and and the lack of support we see for people like uh uh jennifer foy up in virginia who was going to run for governor and you know party bosses told her to stand down i just want you to just share as much as you want about perhaps breaking through the 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 boys club situation because you have worked a lot a lot with with male operatives male um heads of the democratic party but 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 you do know but you do also know how tough it is for for women running for office can you just speak to that experience yeah, you know, I'll say I'll give you a little bit of truth and then I'll give you what my mindset is, right? Okay. So uh, the little bit of truth that I'm going to give y'all is, you know, honestly, it is a boys club. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm the only I'm the only female Democratic person down here in the direct low country. Yeah. And I don't get invited to most of the stuff that they do. Hello. You know, a lot of it is them promoting each other and promoting themselves and holding fundraisers, you know, between themselves and with each other's and that's cool. Like, do they donate to my campaign? Yes. I would be lying to say they don't, but I'm, it's not the same way they promote yes. each other. Yes. Um, and people, you know, I thank God for my network of men and women, yep. right? Yep. Because now that I've been so vocal about it, when people see that there are places that I need to be in, they raise the bell, they bring the alarm. And I need that because I'm only one person out here. And it's a shame that it has to be like that, but nobody should have to look up and tell you to do something that should be natural, right? Mm -hmm. It just shows y'all that women are still fighting for footing Mm -hmm. in the 20th century. It's ridiculous. In the 21st century, we should not still be fighting for that footing. Mm -hmm. We should already be there. It should be natural. Mm -hmm. But when you have a group of men who look around 
And none of them think it's odd to say, you know what? <laughs> Did anybody text Representative Matthews Come and on. say, you know, see if she knew about this? Mm -hmm. You know, even just a simple text, all of them have my cell phone numbers. It's like, but you know what, Mika? Mm -hmm. I can't even worry about it. Nope. <laughs> so let me tell you how I have worked with that in where I am. I have done work in most of their districts because their people call me. If they can't get any response, they call me. And I'm not saying response necessarily from just them. I'm talking about if they're frustrated, they know that I apply pressure. Mm. Women get things done. And I ain't saying that men don't, but I'm saying it ain't the same way we get things done. Come on. And it could be just because of my experience being a mother. I keep telling people being a mother has prepared me for war. I got five terrorists that live in my house go, go, and they drag go, me through it every day. You call, Let me wait, tell you. Wait, I got, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, they, they're not working with me. So if they're working against me, ain't they, ain't they terrorists? <laughs> Aren't they, ter ain't they considered terrorists if they're not you're, working with me? Uh, your kids are lovely. They're working against me. Br Brooklyn is great. I like Brooklyn. She came to my radio show, so I like Brooklyn. She is the head honcho <laughs> of the organization. So let's start there. Okay, so first of all, she's the leader. And if I, if I don't take her out soon, okay. I don't know what the rest is going to look like. But um, okay, of right. course, I love my kids. My kids are great. No, you know, I know somebody's going to take know, that you know, to a sound bite with it. But I don't no, know. No, 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 no. We um, know what that means. We we know. I laughed enough, so if they nah. want to chop it up, we laugh it. No, but and you got a lot of, dragging me through the mud. You, you got mothers right here chiming in. It's like hell yeah. It's totally Yo, started. <laughs> my daughter got mad at me this morning because she was meditating, and I interrupted her meditation on her phone while she eating chicken. I don't even understand that, but okay. <laughs> Oh, I love whatever. it. Whatever. Okay. I got you. No, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> so what I've done to get around that is I don't focus on it. Mm. My, my, me being who I am has become so big that it causes all of them to have to come back to me. <laughs> and so that is how I, and I ain't talking about just here locally. I'm talking about statewide because we have this problem all over the state of South Carolina with men and women, right? Yeah. I don't focus on them. Yeah, And th that is one of the problems that I see, see with so many women. Women are, are perfectionists, right? We're, we're almost subliminally trained to try to fix our flaws. Um, if you look and Google anything self-help-wise, it's always how to help women be better mm -hmm. women, how to help women get a man, how to help women mm -hmm. be better mothers, how to help women be more submissive or, or whatever the case may be. But the problem with that ideology is that most successful people lean into their strengths. That's right. Mm -hmm. They don't worry about their weaknesses because you're, you're always going to have weaknesses, mm -hmm. but you can't focus on them. Mm -hmm. You need to lean into your strengths mm -hmm. because that is where your power comes from. Yeah. And so I've been able to do that because of the hard life that I had, mm -hmm. because so many times I found myself by myself. I don't, I no longer focus on what people think of me or how people want me. There's something I have in my gut and most of us women have it. Mm, mm. Now you just preached a sermon. I really, I really appreciate that. Uh, Crystal I, It's really resonating. You again, you can't see it, but you have people chiming in flame emojis. You making people laugh. You making people clap. Um, when you were talking about the boys club, I saw a lot of puke emojis. They were really resonating with what you had to say. Um, uh, but thank you. Um, folks are rooting for you before again, but, uh, I was going to ask you one more question. I was going to ask you, Oh, what are you up to? So now real quick, before I tell people where to go, we're going to send people cause this, this is going to be call time. Y'all y'all know what call time is. We watched the video on this. So Crystal, this is going to be considered her call time cause she's going to need your support. So we're going to direct them there after, after this, but I wanted to ask you, what are you up to now professionally? Are you juggling? Are you, are you, you know, yeah. What, what are you, what, what is the day in the life like for you? If someone running for Senate running against Tim Scott, essentially. Oh, oh wait, hold up. Oh no. Something happened. Hold up, hold up. Sorry, y'all. Call drop. Call drop for some reason. Hold on one second. Invite friends. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Maybe I have a time limit. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Grassroots media. Till I get producers with a call in. <laughs> with a call-in feature this is good though i'm learning a lot let me turn it down i'm learning a lot yep, there she go okay i'm back i'm, I'm sorry no. i don't know what happened i don't know either i don't know if there's a time that limit. was the devil i was in the zone yeah i don't know if you heard my question though like what are you up to now like what what is the day in the life of someone running for u.s senate right now 
So honestly, uh, Mika, let me just say this. My life is not like anybody else's right now, I'm pretty sure. And I have to really deal with that with myself sometimes Mm -hmm. because I get frustrated that I don't have more time for the things that I think I need more time on, but I'm learning how to move around it. So honestly, like, Tim Scott doesn't have any kids. He doesn't have a wife. He doesn't have, I mean, he's just straight working, right? Mm -hmm. But me, I get my kids up, take them to school in the morning. Mm -hmm. I get on call time at 930, and I do that for four hours. And then right after that, I'm prepping dinner, picking up kids, going to flag football games, Mm -hmm. coming home, checking homework, checking folders, signing papers, asking questions, maybe watch a movie with them. And then it's bedtime and mm. we're back at it again. Mm. That is literally my day. Mm. And and that's if I don't have an event or something in between. Because right. on the days that they go to their dad. So I've kind of coordinated my schedule on the days that they go to their other parents. You know, mm-hmm. that's the days when I try to flag my events for. Okay. Those are the days I try to do all my traveling. So you see how we have to balance and maneuver and I keep saying that's what women bring to the table. We bring that balance because we have to. Yeah. We've always done it. And we will go 10 toes down mm-hmm. for our best friends, our bosses at work, our husbands, our families, mm-hmm. right? We'll do it for everybody else and then push ourselves to the side continually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But why? Right. I don't... If we're going to be exhausted at the end of the day, Mika, why not be exhausted for something we want to do? Absolutely. You're right. You're right. It can't just be get up, be in service of others, especially if you're a black woman. Um, I think it's almost it's almost expected that we're always serving others and that we burn out. And um, yeah, and, and no, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not I'm not doing that either. I've divested from that mindset. But so let's let's send people to where they need to go to support you. Where can people go to support you if they want to support your campaign? What's the best way? What you need right now? I need money, so you can go to actblue.com and find me at Crystal Matthews at Act Blue. Um, you can go to www.matthewsforsenate.com, and that gives you everything in one. There's a donation link. There's more on me, um, all of that. You can text me at 843-310-8755, and I will send you the link in the bio if you need to. Say it one more time. Like Say it one more time. 843 310 Eight seven five five. I got you. Just like a telemarketer. No. Eight four three <laughs> three one zero eight seven five five. Great. Yeah, if you want me to text you my bio and the link and stuff just to make it easier, Good. I can definitely do that yeah. as well. But yeah, um, I don't know how much time we have oh, here, but no, that's it. No, I think I'm gonna go to wrap it up there because what I'm gonna do now, they've been dropping your links to your Instagram and stuff like that. So we're gonna rewatch that. Um, as a Twitch family over here, we're going to watch your campaign video again, which was really good. I watched it when it first came out. It was really dope. But, but I wanted to say uh, one more thing yeah. before you let me yeah, go. Can yeah. I interrupt your show? Oh, absolutely. It's your show. Is this, is this the activist in me? Go ahead. Um, <laughs> I'm not really activist. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Wait, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I, I just want to address, you know, uh, the black the black question. You know, I, I keep getting the question about, you know, what is my agenda for black America? And, you know, I, my answer is it's the same as it is for white America. My my agenda is the same. We want the same shit they want. We just want it without barriers. Mm. We don't want to have to jump through obstacles and walls to get it. Mm. We ain't trying to dig trenches to get the same shit y'all got. We just want it. We like nice manicured lawns and that nice neighborhood. We like clean ass schools with good books. We like all the same stuff that everybody else likes. We just tired of people exploiting us and us still not coming out with nothing. Come on. Come on, let me. So let me I just wanted to leave you with now that. Now listen. Hold on. That's called motherfucking bars, nigga. Okay, I just had to drop a flex bomb. <laughs> that was bars, and I love a candidate who cuss. So by the way, so thank you for keeping it real. Um, <laughs> I really no, you're right. We want the same shit y'all got without the barriers, without the booby traps, without the without the bullshit for sure. So yeah, yeah. Nah, thank you so much, Crystal. And I'm gonna point everybody to your to your page. You're getting a lot of um clap emojis. Um, and I, I love that answer. Actually, that's a very in South Carolina. That's a very savvy answer to that question too. I, I, I'm I'm not mad at that at all. So thank you so much. Um, hit me up anytime you want to come back to the to the live stream as I'm building this out. I'm like you, trying to take risks, trying to take a trying to jump and and, and build out something here. Yo, you're you're already awesome, man. I, I watch it as oh. much as I can. So for those who are out here watching, man, this listen today is not an anomaly. She does this consistently. <sighs> and consistently giving us information that we need to know and digging into the details. And honestly, we need people that are doing that. So if this is your first time listening to our show, 
I advise you to get on and watch it more often because I watch it. Um, I watch it. I listen. I try to get back on. Sometimes I have to watch it to, to play back. But yes, Mika, you already out here doing it. Oh, thank you so much. Look at you. All right. Let me go get my $10 and, and give it to the campaign. Let me go ahead. <laughs> All right, Crystal, thank you so much. I really appreciate you making time for us on Mike Dub. Thank you. You're welcome. All have right. a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Oh, that was so dope, y'all. That was so dope. I love I love how now like when I go through technical difficulties, you don't stress me out the same, right? Yeah, this is thanks for jumping in. Yeah, th- yeah, I think I think um I think so we know we know that Tim's guy is a juggernaut. We're not gonna focus on that per se. Thank you, Kia, for the links. I got you. I wanted to just pull up some some basic general like she said, Matthews for Senate. And then we're gonna watch her um we're gonna watch her video again. Um Go to MatthewsForSenate.com, y'all, and you can do all that stuff that she dropped. Hopefully, you jotted down a number because I did not. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, her campaign her campaign tagline is, Crystal Matthews is one tough mother. Um, she keeps it real. Ever since I met her, I'm ser- serious. Like, so I see this little cute girl, and I'm going to say girl. She's a grown-ass woman with five five kids. I see this cute this cute woman. Oh, we, yeah, hold on one second. Let me see. What I want to do, what I want to look at. I just want, let me Google her again. Cause her images is like bananas. She's so photogenic. So I see this cute woman in, in the, at, at the, um, and Jen actually put me on the, the candidate I was working for. I see this cute face, um, woman, like look like a baby. I'm like, is she 20 some years old? Not, um, engineer manager at Boeing. She was at least, I think she's no longer with Boeing. And I see this face and I'm like, who is this? And she's like, yeah, I'm gonna run for office. And like so unaffected, so not even considering, um, oh, this is a good picture for her. Not even considering anything. I, I don't hear no defeat in her voice. I don't hear, let's see if we can, um, let me see if I save it. I can make it bigger. All right. Um, I don't, I never hear any defeat in her voice. I never hear any like, well, I don't know. Lack of like, lack of, um, I don't hear any lack of, of, of clarity in her voice. And I know people, I know she is a long shot. She is definitely a long shot. I wouldn't, I, you know, I would never like play in y'all face and say she not. She, she a long shot. But, but the fact, what I like about Crystal is that she just goes for it. And these are her, um, her five kids. This is Brooklyn right here. And, oh man, you can't see it. Let me try to make it. But I hate this. I hate when it does this. Let me see if I can, um, pull it up like this. Hold up. Downloads. See, it might not come out no it's not gonna come out big because oh i know because it's a different kind of file but yeah like she she has these beautiful kids she's just like i just never seen someone who just tries and she doesn't get she doesn't get a lot of like yeah i mean going back to the to me guys at divine um sam johnson endorsement like it's very lukewarm and yeah, yeah you can donate but wouldn't like we need to see more than just the you know the the behind the scenes type of support and I hope she doesn't mind me saying this, but like, you know, we talked at length about, you know, was she invited to the photo op at MUSC when Jill Biden was coming? And, and, and when she said she offered it up here, she's like, why isn't she getting a text message saying, hey, can you be downtown at 10 o'clock a.m. on Monday? Like, why isn't she getting that type of like heads up? Um, and so so it, it really I, the, the men in this party, the men in the Democratic Party need to do better. Right. Um, and I'm just so happy she's in the race. It's a, it's, it's a tough race, but I'm glad she's in it because when you, when you're a crystal Matthews and you're considered the quote unquote underdog, you, you help, you have, you have an opportunity to bring to table certain issues, to bring up certain issues. If there's a debate, you're able to, to, to table certain issues that aren't necessarily always prioritized. And I think that's important. Win, lose or draw, it's important that her voice is one voice that's in the race, right? So let me play uh, this ad just to familiarize yourself with who she is. You heard from her live, but here's her ad. Let's see. I'm Crystal Nicole okay. Matthews, and I'm running. For those who remember, we watched this way back. We watched this way back. But when it first came out, well, let's watch it again. I'm Crystal Nicole Matthews, and I'm running for the U.S. Senate. After a year marked by incredible loss, we've had no choice but to keep going. We've suffered. We've adapted. We've stepped it up. While the pandemic underlined inequalities in America's workforce, our health care, and even our classrooms, at times, even our victories were bittersweet. As a single parent in a pandemic, as a woman in America, 
I know what it means to push forward against the greatest of odds. But should we have to push so hard? Should we have to struggle to put food on the table and get our basic needs met? No. Should working families be forced to decide between paying our rent and caring for our children? I beat the odds. As a working mother of five, a female engineering planner, and the first woman to represent South Carolina District 117. But my story should not be an outlier. I stand on the shoulders of those that came before me and choose every day to build a better future for those that will come after me. South Carolina deserves better. I'm Crystal Nicole Matthews, and I'm running for the U.S. Senate. Together, let's bring it home for South Carolina. Yeah, y'all are remarking on how long she, young she looked. Yeah, because she got me beat in that game. I know I be fooling somebody, y'all, but then when I started talking, you're like, oh, yeah, you're an old lady. I'm really, like, 88 years old. I'm older than my father, um, <laughs> spiritually. Spiritually. <laughs> um, watching watching Westerns. But, no, yeah, she. I don't. I still don't know how old uh, Crystal is. I swear to God, I don't know how old she is. I don't, I don't know. All I know is, yeah, you can't even go by the kids because <laughs> they run. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, but that's great. She's, she's timeless. She's ageless, right? If this don't, Crystal, Crystal, if the politics don't work out, you need to go ahead and do, drop that like skincare line because <laughs> you can make millions. But yeah, um, I'm gonna hop over to, to Twitter. Let me close out this window. I'm gonna hop over to Twitter real quick and see if I can get more from the Blue Jamboree. Again, Crystal was at the Blue Jamboree. The Post and Courier covered it. I'm trying to get more pictures. Um... Let's see. Bacar, like I said, Bakari was there. Look at Michelle. Michelle, you was there? Michelle, you and uh, I don't know if she's still with us here on the chat. Michelle was there, friend to the pod. She said she attended her first Blue Jamboree. Charleston Dempsey was so exciting. Got to meet some, so many incredible candidates and elected officials. We we're ready for 2022. I'm glad you feel that way, Michelle. That's good. That's what you want. So I don't know. I don't know. Everyone on the show, I don't know. So this is, let me see. Uh, Mr. Greg Perry, uh, Perry, he's an educator, uh, chair of the, the Charleston Dems. Okay, okay. Low Country Young Democrats, communication director. All right, how you doing, Mr. Greg Perry? So he's pictured here with Jamie Harrison. Again, one of the big top dogs that came. Joe Cunningham was tweeting up a storm. Did he go? I guess um, Saturday, 12 p.m. As part of the Blue Jamboree, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Joe and Joe Cunningham, special guest, Former U.S. Senator Doug Jones. Okay. You know, Joey, Joey was out there. That's the Post and Courier piece right there. Um, Amy. I know Amy. Do I follow Amy? I don't know. Um, Amy is out here to see um, reasons uh, why we going to be all right. This is from Erica, Blue Jamboree, Low Country. Copyrighted music. I don't want to get popped, so I'm going to stop it. Um, oop, I don't want to stop everything, though. Yeah, we're going to be all right, though, for sure. Shout out to you, Erica. We're going to be all right. All right, direct, uh, di let me see, director. Let me click on her. I don't know who this is. Uh, director of Diversity and Inclusion for the Charleston Dems. Oh, they got directors of Diversity and Inclusion now? Activist, blogger? Let's follow her. Let's follow her, see. Oh, there's Rob Daniel. Um... Yeah, Bakari was there. Oh, uh, 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 that's one of my Twitter peeps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yep. There's Dr. Annie. Yep. That was a great ad, y'all. All right. So, yeah, I just wanted to show you Blue Jamboree. Bakari was there. Let me put Bakari. I could have just went to his thing. Let's see. Blue Jamboree. Here we go. Here is um, an, uh, Amanda Linton. I don't know Amanda. But she is um, pictured here with Bakari wearing a nice little sweater, seasonally appropriate. Okay. So it was, it was a feel good. And like when I went to the last one, it was during the presidential primary. So it was in North Charleston. It was right across the street from Isaiah Church of Christ. Um, it was huge. There were crazy billboard trucks from like the right out there doing crazy shit. Marching bands, I, you know, I y'all know how I feel about marching bands, bringing out black HBCU, but marching bands, I hate that. Whether black candidate does it or white one, I hate it. Um, uh, but yeah, okay, here's some pictures. 
So that's J.A. Moore. <laughs> that's Marlon Kempson. That's Joey Cunningham. And there's me and McLeod, right? So, um, you know, that's good. Some heavy hitters there. The East Cooper Democrats. Do I follow him? Let me follow him just as a pledge of good faith. Um, yeah. Yeah. A lot going on. Yep. There's J.A. again. Doug Jones. J.A.'s had like 18 different haircuts since the pandemic. All right. Almost didn't recognize him. All right. So we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Um, oh, is this the other one running for Senate? I think. Is this the one running? Um, is she running for Senate along Crystal? Is that her? Hold up now. Hold up. Let's see if she got an ad. I don't see an ad. Might have to get her on the phone too. Might have to get her on the phone too. So, um, Angela uh, is a Jeter running for U.S. Senate. Might have to get her on. Might have to. She don't got no um, campaign video. How about I go to a website? Mm mm. That's just a donation link. All right, we'll get it. We'll get it together. All right. Yeah, you like that slogan? Where is Joe's good? Um. What? What? Where's Joe feel good ad? You want to see his ad? I don't want to see Joe's ad. I'm not gonna play Joe Cunningham's ad because I got some inside tea about it. So I don't want to play it no more. <laughs> I got some inside tea. I can't even talk about it. I just will not play that ad. Not nothing crazy, nothing criminal, nothing just like ew, like gross. You see my Giants won this weekend. I know y'all wanted me to update y'all on that. And um, Knicks beat the Bucks over the weekend, but then we lost to the Cavs. But yeah, Giants won yesterday. Danny Dimes. All right, so let's transition. Let's transition. Um, again, just taking a closer look at, um, took a closer look at the, uh, campaigns, this, this whole race for mayor up in the Midlands is, is, is to me is really the behind the scenes is way more interesting than the race, which is a problem. I need to get, get disciplined, right? No Kia we will text. Uh, oh, I'll text you Kia. Kia, I'll tell you, I trust you. (laughs) Um, but we will, we'll, we'll definitely, we'll definitely, um, Text key. But yes, yeah, just the behind the scenes has been really interesting to watch. I'm just going to read a little bit again, going back to the mayoral race uh, in Columbia. Uh, Sam Johnson, who finished third in Columbia's mayoral race to succeed Mayor Steve Benjamin, has endorsed at large city councilwoman Tamika Isaac Devine. And we already read the statement earlier today, y'all, um, with her experience, yada, yada, yada. Real tepid, issued on a, on a Saturday night, literally trying to just dump it. Um, Divine faces District 4 Councilman Daniel Rickerman in the runoff for mayor November 16th, right? Um, Rickerman finished first with nearly 44% of the vote on November 2nd. Divine finished second with 30%. You know, it's a 50 plus one race, so you got to get 50% plus, you know, got to get more than 50% to, to win the race, right? Benjamin, who supported, this is the thing. So Benjamin, initially, he endorsed Sam Johnson. I don't know if I made that clear earlier, but Mayor Benjamin actually endorsed Sam Johnson, which was weird, right? I said this during the last live stream. You know, to me, guys, are divine. Y'all been working together for 20 years. She's the godmother of one of your kids. Yeah, you went and endorsed, you know, your, your eight of six years, right? Your, your chief of staff here. And this is how it works. Going back to the Michael Wakila story, Michael Wakila is in the Benjamin universe as well. Michael Wakila, Bakari Sellers, like the, this you, Sam Johnson, these are all in the, they're all planets in the, the same Benjamin orbit. And it's just men to me, men prioritizing and promoting men on top of men on top of men. Um, which is a which is a problem. It needs to be way more. It need, they need to be supporting parity way more than what they currently do, right? Um, so that's that's that. Um, you know, let me see some top news from Post and Courier. I didn't even look at the front page today. Oh, pair of fragile um, smokestacks on Charleston South East Side are saved. Okay, they saved the smokestacks. Yeah. Oh, here let's read let's read a little bit. Let's see if um. Did anybody get any news on this? No. Uh-uh. But yeah, MUSC doctor. I'm glad this is in there. Let's see. Let's look at the front page. Let's see if that made the front page. Because she, she was going, I think she announced formally this morning. But maybe she tipped off in a, tipped off a reporter like Thomas Novelli. Usually he did call it a scoop. So um, apparently she must have went to him. Uh, so Smokestack Save was on the front, front page of today's paper, Post and Courier. Um, nope. 
Mm-mm. No. It, it, it broke this morning officially, so we got that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's very interesting. All right. I, I, you know what? I don't, I don't know. It's okay, so let me try to say, what else do I need to talk about, y'all? What else today? Uh, news headlines. We try to cover the news headlines here. Let me go back to the news over here to see channel two. Um, I want to just make sure I cover everything I need to cover, but I do have a busy day ahead of me. Um, and I just want to want to be redundant. Crystal is really, was really helpful. Wanted to do a news roundup. Wanted to talk about the blue jamboree we did. Um, mm -mm. what's this? Oh, oh, let's watch this. Shout out to Maris. Look at Maris. A group in the low country is working to help people who live in Haiti as they recover from an earthquake three months. Come through, Maris. The glam just don't stop. What market y'all think she gonna get swallowed up? I think either D.C., like Houston, Texas, D.C. I'm trying to think. She definitely would do good in northern New Jersey. Like New the New York metro area, she would do good there. Yeah, I'm thinking D.C. or like a big southern city. Maybe Atlanta. We ain't gonna have a long. <laughs> later, News 2's Jordan Siopa spoke with those behind this effort. Jordan, what can you tell us? Helping Maris, Haiti. A new group here in the Low Country called Friends of Haiti has raised thousands of dollars through donations that will go directly to the nation to help with earth window yard. as well as other issues like violence. Relief efforts for Haiti are underway here in the Low Country after a devastating earthquake shook the country back in August. We have now yep. raised over twenty-five thousand dollars to help the people. Come on, cool Haiti. breeze. Just a few months ago, State Representative Wendell Gilliard gathered a group of local church members, activists, and others from the community to form Friends of Haiti. They have raised money that will go directly to the Red Cross in Haiti to help with recovery efforts following the earthquake and violence they say plagues the nation. We need to open the doors to our Haitian brothers and sisters. Whether long-term or short-term, we should offer up residence to them Nicole. until we can help and put this country in the right directions. Today, the president of the Haiti National Red Cross, Dr. Guito Jean-Pierre, received the donations right here in Charleston. He oh says boy. those funds they went can to the Red Cross. Oh, went to the Red. Oh Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord. Help get Haiti back on its feet. Water. Um, health. Food. And rebuild. Help the people with with, with, with the rebuilding process. That's whatever we are receiving is contributing to this process. He says he hopes to see Haiti get back to the way it once was. It's, it's a fact. It's a well-known fact. Haiti is, a very, is in a very difficult situation. Nobody wants a nation to stay like that. No. And if you would like to donate to the cause, we will have more information on our website. That's countonto.com. Live in the studio, Jordan Siopa, Count on Two. Shout out. Let's see. Um, let's see. Let me see if um, let's see if, if Annie's announcement, Annie and I already messed up her name, Annie Andrews, right? Let's see if Nancy Mace got triggered yet, because I can't wait. You know, Nancy can't resist digging at a, a, a female dim. You know she can't. And that ad, ooh, that ad, this is, so this is um, her personal, I guess, I don't know, her Nancy Mays page, let's see. She out there arrived just saying, look, wearing her romper, get it. So, ooh, oh, she, she trying to be cute. She trying to be cute. Once the vote hit 20, 218, she, yeah, she voted no. Yeah, she voted no. I thought it was dead, though. So she out here trolling them, see? This is what she do. This is who she is. Like, we about to watch Annie Andrews add it one more time. This is what she do from her personal account. This is what she do. Hold on a second. You know what Nancy look Nancy means? This loser moves. This loser moves. Oh, oh, somebody, oh, somebody else hint. What what is this? Oh, he did he make it? Oh, he must have made it. He photoshopped it. Shout out to Michael O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Michael O'Brien. 
Oh, thank you so much, El Cujay. I appreciate your support. Thank you, Nicole, as well. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate you. I'm going to get Michael on here. Michael be making me laugh. I don't follow him. I thought I follow Oh, no, I follow him. Okay. I like Mike. I, he be saying stuff. We don't always support the same candidate, but he be on point. He be on point. Yeah. Oh, my God. I want to see if Nancy Mays got triggered by this. Such a, like, this loser moves, yo. You a whole congresswoman out here trolling. Let me go back to her, um, her rep page. Oh, look, MUSC. Okay. This is her rep. I went to her rep page. Oh, her mentions. I'm in her mentions. I'm in her mentions. Okay. Uh, let me go to her rep page. Ooh, ooh. Let's go. See if she got triggered. Not yet. Look, so this is, so she's trying so hard. She was trying so hard. Can you even vote on a bill you haven't read? Mm-mm. Look at Nicholas. Nicholas always in here. <laughs> he was like, he's like, you want to read the bill? It's right here. It's right here. Thank y'all so much. Let me see the sound effects. I know. Let's see what else. So she ain't say nothing yet, but she gonna clap back. She gonna clap. She gonna clap back. She gonna cause she knows she loves clout. She a clout chaser. She like a young rapper. She going she going um look she been talking shit of course voted against the partisan voted against the part yeah you got to you got to do it cuz Fitz news out there fucking you know digging in your shit so you got to you got to vote like a sociopath right and look at her going at AOC she just mentioning her name just so AOC can hey look at me look at me AOC look at me i want to be as 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 viral as you i want to be followed like you look at me it's not about followers but let me just look at the followers 50, 50, about 50, okay, y'all can't see it right here. 51, about 51,000 followers here, right? Let's look at AOC. Oh, wait. Oh, this is the other page. Yeah. Ain't no way. Oh, this is, oh, excuse me, million. I'm sorry. I thought it was 12,000. Million. Of course it is. Of course. I'd be adding her too, Nancy. I'd be adding her too, try to get some clout. Yeah, Ryan Grimm is, is, is on point. I like Ryan Grimm. Follow him, y'all. Intercept. Follow follow Ryan Grimm. The progressives need to hold it. Was trying to hold out. All right. So yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna end it there, y'all. Um, this was really good. I thought it was a really good live stream. I appreciate y'all support. Um, your support is going a long way. Um, I I can't say it enough. Uh, shout out to all y'all who have who have reached out to me, one of my address. Shout out to y'all who hit me up on Venmo. And Cash App, uh, I turned 41 on Wednesday. Today's my daddy's birthday. Today's my daddy's birthday. <laughs> just a few, you know, just a house full of Scorpios giving my mama hell. Just, that's it. She just had to deal with four Scorpios in the house, and she's a Sagittarius. That's it. That's all she had to do, right? Oh, appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, thank you, holy. Look at, look at the homie. You a real one. Let me do that. I love Christian. Come on. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. I wanted to show y'all something. Can I show y'all? Can I make an exclusive here? Before I dip, before I dip. I know I said bye and y'all, some of y'all hung up already. All right. Let me see if I can send it to myself. Let me send it. Oh, we about to make a reel about this. I I, I thought about this. I thought about it. And I said, you know, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make a reel. I'm going to make a reel about it because I'm going to talk about how um, black women have historically been likened to some unsavory things. I'm hold on. Don't hang up yet. I'm about to be, I'm about to go. Hold up. Hold up. Right. Upload. Boom. All right. Um, black women and beauty standards and who gets to determine what's beautiful, what's not. Right. We're going to, that's, that's an issue. That's a, that's a real issue. Actually, let me do this. Right. So let me hop over here. Boom. Did y'all see this? This is totally unrelated to politics, but I'm going to make a reel about this. Okay. All right. Did y'all see this? Hopefully it ain't no volume on this. Cause I was driving. Did y'all see this? Have y'all, have y'all been? Yeah, let me mute it. Did y'all, have y'all been to Mount Pleasant recently? Let me see what you're saying. Happy birthday, right, Twix? (laughs) Y'all got them. Happy birthday, right, Twix? Yes. (laughs) Kia's mama. Yes. 
I, <laughs> I went over. I'm going to Chicago on my birthday, so I won't be live streaming on Wednesday. So I'm going to Chicago to see my twin brother, spend my spend my 40, 41st birthday with my twin brother. So I got a coat this weekend. So I don't know why I did this. I don't know why I reverted. Real quick before I show you this. I don't know why I reverted back to like a 12-year-old. Like, I'm like, hey, I got this coat because, you know, I'm going to Chicago and it might be a little brisk. And so the coat I got is a little too big, but I'm going to act like it's an oversized puffer coat. Like, I'm going to act like it's off the runway type. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just try to make it. It's kind of big, though. So I'm showing the coat, and my mom does not approve any coats that don't go below your shin, right? She likes ankle-length coats. And I'm like, all right, whatever. It's long as hell. So I got the coat. I said, Ma, do it look too big? I'm asking for her, her opinion on what size it is. And Left Twix is like, no, you need it big. Is it cheap? And I'm like, Ma, I didn't spend $120 on it. That's what you're asking. No, but is it cheap material? Will it keep you warm? I'm like, Ma, it's a coat. It goes down to my damn fucking ankles. I didn't curse. And then here come my dad. I'm like, Dad, I just want to know if it looks too bulky on me. He's like, well, you know, you know, you, you, a, you, a, you a fleshy woman. I'm like... I'm plus, yes, yeah, th news, thank you, this just then, yes, I'm plus size, dad, I was like, yeah, but dad, coats can have, like, a little cinching at the waist, he was like, no, no, no you a big, you a big, what just keeps reiterating that I'm big, and I'm like, thanks, okay, go, go back in the kitchen, go back, keep, keep making the garden salad, okay, go over there, go, go over there, and, um, but anyway, this just was a big debacle, like, I don't know why I showed him the coat, just, just why, yeah, uh-huh, Kia, you saw it. All right, so here we go. Here we go. So this is where I'm driving over to, to, to you know, <laughs> my dad. My dad is problematic. My mom is, like, the least fat-phobic person I've ever met in my life. Like, the least fat-phobic person. Like, naturally fat. Like, she's she's naturally just accepting. But look at look at this. So I'm going to make a reel about this. I'm driving across the bridge. I saw this and I had to go back. I had to just swing a U-turn, come back. That's how I saw the, the road closures on North of Morrison by the police because of the flooding. And then I came back. Oh, like, I saw this and I said, no, she didn't. So look, so I'm driving. I'm driving, being irresponsible. And boom, can y'all see that? It's a, it's a picture of Catherine from Southern Charm. And it says, dreaming of fuller lips. And so it's an endorsement, it's some kind of deal with, and it says Southern Charm at the bottom, and it's it's the med spa, whatever. Dreaming of fuller lips. So this is the woman who called, who likened me to a primate, and so she's now the standard. Like she, and I'm not I'm not shaming anybody who got plastic surgery. Then I'm gonna shame. Watch, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be shameful. I'm not shaming anyone who gets plastic surgery because Lord knows I already said what I was. Uh, Lord knows, right? Well, this chick is on what her fifth face, right? And I guess I would be on my fifth face, too, if, if Calhoun was in the gene pool, right? If John, John C. Calhoun was in my gene pool, I guess I'd be on my fifth fucking face, too. But this bitch is on her fucking fifth face, and she out here talking about full of lips, but you had the audacity to call black women ugly and liking us to animals? We got something for your ass. I just got to respond. I, I think it's just my duty to respond to this bitch. Um, and and, and this, is, this is who gets to create, you know, beauty standards, impossible beauty standards. Like, y'all ever notice how many billboards in Mount Pleasant are all about plastic surgery or like um, cool sculpting and shit and all these like lunchtime procedures? Like, I just need O'Neal plastic surgery to loosen up that chokehold over over these women because some of y'all showing up and y'all think y'all look like Catherine from Southern Charm and y'all y'all looking y'all looking like rest in peace Joan Rivers, but like y'all looking a little different. Sandy Sin. <laughs> Sandy Sin. Sandy Sin, I don't know what's going on. Malpractice, Sandy Sin. You're a gross elected official, so I don't mind saying stuff about your plastic surgery. Sandy Sin. Sandy Sin, you look crazy. <laughs> Just ease up. Ease up off the injectables. Please, please. <laughs> dreaming of fuller lips mm, I'm dating a black guy for a plot line and I call the black woman ugly and I act like I didn't know she was black even though she was using black emojis the whole time she interacted interact with me yeah I'm reprehensible and um, I'm the descendant of John C. Calhoun uh, you dreaming of fuller lips follow me in my fifth face uh, 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 uh. 
Yeah, whatever. All right. <laughs> All right, let me get canceled. Let me cancel myself. All right. <laughs> Sandy, I'm sorry. Sandy, look. Look. Somebody need to call Sandy Sin for and tell her, like, to chill out. It's just getting out of hand. Right? <laughs> Those weird uh, Bob noses. Right? In the 80s and 90s, Jessica, you remember that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Skirt Magazine. What's Skirt Magazine still around, Evelyn? <laughs> she do like the cat woman. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank y'all for indulging me. No. Sandy Sin is gross, though. So, yeah. Yeah. It's it's not it's not um a secret. I'm talking about like her voting, like, get out of here. Like, get out of here. And then like if you ever go by her law offices over there, like on like near James Island, like I guess it's technically before you get to James Island. She got that um thin blue line flag out there on her office. And it makes you look older. It don't make you look like it don't make I, I get a little, look, I get a little something here and there. I get that. I totally get that. Like a little something, you know, make the cheeks fuller a little bit. But like, it just, it just don't, let me stop because y'all want to say I'll attack women. All right, I'll do the man next. I'll do a man next. I'll do a man next. Find me uh, Joe Biden. <laughs> There's a facelift for you. There's a facelift for you. It's bipartisan. Joe Biden. I like the old Joe face. I don't like the, I don't like the, 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 the uh, pullback face. I don't like it. Him and John Kerry. I get what he was trying to get go for, though. I get that. Right? But he lost all that character that he had in his face to me when he got, he pulled it back a little too tight. And it was like, like yeah, like when you look at his, like, he lost a lot of that character when he got his face lived. Him and John Kerry. Let me be an equal opportunity. Man, John Kerry, I mean, I know John Kerry had an interesting face. I love interesting faces, though. Like, I really do. So, yeah, this is, like, after, and I'm glad that his, his stuff started to settle because when he first got it, it just was, yeah. Like, and you just look back to, like, here. I like interesting faces. I like, you know, a little gravity, a little, a little something. I like that. Expressive, but that I think that's after the facelift. That's after the facelift. But I like, you know, when he ran for president. Yeah, look at that. All that character's gone. All that character's gone. You pulling it too tight. It started to settle though. I would have got some lips though. If I was him, I would have got some lips. I'm like, give me some more lips. All right. <laughs> Mitt Romney didn't get no work done, did he? Did Mitt Romney do it? I think he looked, I mean, Mitt Romney looks natural. If he got work done, that's how you got it. If Mitt Romney got work done, it looks natural. It looks good. It looks good. Too tight in the, in the eyes. <laughs> Kenny Rogers, may he rest in peace. Oh, ooh. Who's that, um, the famous Wayne Newton? <sighs> I don't know how Wayne Newton, like, how he blinked. This shit looked tight as fuck. Oh, my God. Yeah, like this, 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 Sandy Sin, uh, you're going to get that Joker smile. It's going to be a wrap. Yeah. Oof. Uh, they say, no when to say when, you know what I mean? And it's okay to go gray. It's okay to, um, is this a recent picture? He's straight. I didn't know that. It's okay. To, like, okay, now he's letting it go a little bit. Teeth look like they just, you know, neon white. Got some crow's feet here. That's good. Crow's feet is fine. Cheeks look a little impossibly plump. Impossibly plump at that age, but that's okay. All right, I'm the worst. All right, that's it. If you want to get plastic surgery, please get it. Please get it. Just know that I will bring you up on Twitch, and I'll bring myself up too if I get some. All right? All right? <laughs> any good faith, any good credibility I had at the beginning of the, of the live stream, I have, don't, I have just forfeited. I get it. All right, no more Wayne Newton. <laughs> Just edit out the last 15 minutes of this live stream. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Countdown 41 Savage. Thank you so much for the subs. Thank you for the new follows. Thank you for everything. Thank you for opening my newsletter. Please support Nicole. Support the people who support me. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I will see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. Bye.